Hello everyone and welcome to this week's extension tutorial. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you how to license your extension and attach a license to it, whether it be a free or a paid one, in order to basically verify your extension. And for the paid version, this will give you more trust for the users when they're installing your extension, as well as prevent pop-ups from things like antivirus software. So we're gonna be going over how to make a free uh, license yourself and integrate that into your extension. And then after that, I'll show you how to create a paid Windows and paid Mac license. Now, firstly, let's go over the free license. This is something you can create yourself um, under any name and set of properties you want. I've already gone over it slightly in the previous tutorial, but if you go to the Adobe CEP GitHub, it has a free tool called ZXB Sign CMD, which will allow you to sign any of your files with any license file you give it. And if you're not familiar, a license file can come in the format .pfx or .p12, and we'll want to be using p12, but uh, these these extensions are interchangeable, so you can easily change PFX into P12. So again, we're going to be using ZXP Sign CMD, and just get whatever version you want. Usually version 3 or 4 is good. If it's been updated at this point, just get the newest uh, sub still supported version. And then of course, get the version for your OS. And all you're going to need is this EXE file, and we're going to be using command prompt or terminal to run it. Then if we scroll down a little bit into the documentation, we can load up a document called Packaging and Signing Adobe Extensions. And this is going to tell us technically how we can both sign um, and create our own sign uh, licenses. So just at the top it says this is how you create a signed package. You need to call the program, tell it you're going to sign it, give it the input directory, the output is the XP path, and then the license. But if we don't have a license, we can't do anything. So first we need to create one. If we go down to create a self-signed certificate, this is exactly what we want. So the first thing I need to do is make sure, of course, I had downloaded ZXP Sign CMD, and I have it in this location here. So then I'll load up a command prompt or terminal, and I'm going to navigate to this folder where it's located. So I'll say CD my E drive, and then I'll paste this path here. Now if I was to type in ZXP Sign CMD, it's going to give me a list of all the options and things I need to do in order to run it. So now we can just go through here and look at the parameters it's given us and figure out what we need to put in. So first we need to type in ZXP Sign CMD, again to refer to the actual little applet we're using. And then we're going to create a self-signed certificate. This means we're going to basically define everything ourselves, and it's not going to have the same uh, sort of power as a paid license, which again will prevent things like pop-ups from antivirus software and also establish trust inside of uh, the system. So then we need to put in uh, all of the information it tells us here, the country code, and then we need the state or province. And of course, you can put in arbitrary values for these. We're just creating a temporary certificate for simple purposes. And the organization, you can call whatever you want. The common name, I'll just put in Nate is me. The password, after the password, we need to give it the output path. We'll just call this a uh, license test. And we need to give it a .p12 extension as well. And then there's also a last flag for options, but in general, this should be good. So again, you need the uh, exe name of ZXP Sign CMD. You need to tell you're making a self-signed cert because the other tag is to basically sign the files once you have created one. You need the country code, the state or province code, the organization name, the common name for yourself or business, a password, and then the name of the output uh, license file which in this case is just going to be license test. So once it's done, it will tell you whether it's generated successfully or not. In my case, it did successfully. If not, it should give you a message saying uh, which part of the code isn't accurate. It could just be a simple typo, but make sure you have all of the same uh, inputs required, as well as a dash here in front of self-signed cert. Now if I navigate to the folder where I created this, you can see I have this license test.p12, which we can now use to sign any of our files. And again, this is just a free license that we've created ourselves, so it doesn't have the same power and it might cause things like uh, smart screen pop-ups on Windows and uh, preventative installation uh, pop-up windows on Mac. 
but now we can use both the ZXP sign CMD and our license test file to sign an extension. So let's say, for example, I want to use this FVS Creative Pack uh, extension, which has all of the extension files in here. All we need to do is sign them with our new uh, test license. So in order to sign anything with the ZXP sign CMD, we just again refer to the uh, executable. And then instead of saying self sign cert, we'll say sign. We're going to type in the folder name um, of what we're signing. And in my case, again, it's fvs or com.fvs.creativepack. And then we need to put the output location. I'll just call it uh, test signing.zxp. It needs to be a ZXP format as well. And then the last two parameters are the license file itself. So license test.p12 and then the password. Again, important to know your password. And then once we click on enter, and if it was successful, it will say sign successfully. If it failed, hopefully it will tell you enough information to know why. And you'll see we'll have now our output ZXP file called test signing. I can just create a copy of it and convert it to a zip, and then I'll extract it. And now if I go into there, you can see we have all of the same extension files, but now we have our MIME type and our meta info, which is an indication that it's been signed successfully. Once this setup has been solidified, if you move any of the files or folders, um, it can cause serious issues and cause it not to function because these are basically uh, letting you know that it's been signed, which means that not only is there a layer of trust, the way that the files and folders are set up need to be solidified and not move. So if there are files you need to be um, changed or moved around, like installing packs or something for your extension, these need to be done in a different location because these files cannot be messed with. All right, so that's how we create a free um, license for our extensions. Now let's take a look at what I went through to get a paid extension in order to establish more trust, prevent pop-ups and other things like that. For Mac and Windows, it's gonna be a separate process. For Windows, you're going to need a sort of SSL certificates uh, through a website like uh, Komodo or K Software. And then for Mac, you're gonna to need to sign up for the Apple Developer Program. Now again, these are both paid methods and you should only go through with this if you've already been into extensions and have some maybe jobs lined up and have the money and want to invest in yourself. Uh, because it will end up costing approximately $70 to $100 per year for each OS. So if you're just making Windows installers, you're lucky in that you don't have to buy, you know, two, two licenses to keep going. But it's definitely worth investing in yourself if you're going to be making extensions. The first couple times you make an extension installer with one of these signed certificates, you may still get the error pop-ups, uh, meaning that uh, it doesn't have enough installations through your license to basically prevent those pop-ups but after so many times of installing or using your license in a, an executable file or in signed files it's going to essentially put in more and more trust into the system because anytime you use a license file essentially what's happening is it's connecting to a server to verify your identity which you've put in yourself and essentially that is a layer of trust which allows the uh, computer to then trust you and not bring up pop-ups and things like that. So the more times your license is used in installers or signed files, the more trust will be established on the back end and the less problems your users and the less problems your users will have. So the first kind is going to be for Windows, which I just used a, a K software here, which is a reseller of SSL certificates. And the link for this will be in the description. But uh, we're going to be looking at getting an OV code signing certificate, not an EV, because this is much larger and for big companies. Uh, the OV is what we're looking at, and right now it's priced at $84 per year, but if you sign a longer uh, deal, you can get it for cheaper. There is quite a bit of information they're going to require. Now, to actually obtain this, you're going to need to provide some personal information to establish that initial trust. You're going to basically require things like proof of billing, um, proof that you have a bank or have made payments to it, and your ID, of course. For me, I had to buy a second phone uh, just to get this all to work because some of my information wasn't matching. Um, you basically have to make sure all your information is matching. So if your address isn't accurate and maybe 
your phone isn't attached to that address properly or something, you can have issues. I had to go to the bank over and over and over and get some documents notarized, and then I had to get a new phone, and then I had to get things notarized again because I did it wrong the first time. So it can be a really complicated process. The easiest thing to do is just make sure you have everything uh, ready to go in the beginning. And you wanna make sure all the accounts and things you're providing are already matching with the phone numbers and the address and things like that. So once you click on buy now for this, you can select the plan you want, put in all of your information, and it looks like they do support PayPal now. And then once you click on submit, you'll be asked to provide all of the documentation we just discussed, whether it be a scanned ID, scanned bank statements, things like that. And sometimes you will need to get them notarized, which means somebody uh, has been there officially to look at it and sign off on it. And that will be important as well, possibly. But after you go through that whole process, however long it takes, for me it took, I think, about a month total. Uh, it was a very stressful time. After all that time, you're going to get this .pfx file. And there is a guide on most of the websites that provide these on how to install that and download it. Usually it involves using uh, Internet Explorer, of all things, because it still supports these older formats. And then using that, you can download the .pfx file. And then you just simply take that pfx file they gave you and change the extension to .p12 and it shouldn't change anything. So again, this can be a long and arduous process if, if just one little thing is off because you have to keep going in and applying um, to basically re-upload documentation and prove your identity. They really want to know that you are trustable. So this is really the way to go if you're looking to get a paid license for Windows. For Mac, things are a bit easier because they already have everything set up nicely through the Apple Developer Program for the people who make applications. For this, you can go through the overview of everything, but we just want to enroll. And this does cost, I think, $99 per year, and um, it's about the same price, essentially, as the Windows one. So this is just going to tell you everything you need to enroll, such as two-factor authentication and other things. So I'm going to go ahead and sign into my Apple Developer account, which you can just basically sign into your Apple ID. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my two-factor code as it asks, and I'll click on Trust. So as you can see, it tells me I'm already associated with the account of a membership, which is fine. If you, if you haven't already enrolled, you'll need to go through the options to enroll. After that, I'm going to go ahead and go to my account settings under Certificates. And I'll just go down here to Certificates, IDs, and Profiles. And it looks like I need to agree to their latest terms. I believe they added support for other countries and things and um, I'm reading very fast here, and I agree. So then I'll go back again to certificates, and you can see I have two certificates. One of them is a developer ID installer, and the other is a developer ID application. And if you're ever not sure what your certificate is, you can just click on it and it will tell you uh, what it is when you got it, when it expires. And it will also tell you how to download the cert file, uh, which will be required when notarizing on Mac. On Windows, it's a P12 or PFX, and on Mac, it's a .CER. And on Mac, it's actually, once you get it, it sort of integrates into the system where you can select it from a list, uh, and it's less so an actual file on your system. So if you ever want to create a new one, all you have to do is click on the plus button here under Certificates, and we're going to want to create a Developer ID Installer or Developer ID Application. So you can create a Developer ID Installer and a Developer ID Application, and essentially, once we click on continue, it's going to ask us to start going through the process, uploading our files and documentation, and in the end, it's going to spit out a CER file that we can basically click on on our Mac, and it'll be integrated for any use inside of packages or DMG Canvas to sign our extension installers. So you can simply go through the guides to get your new certificate, and once you're done, it's going to then, of course, pop up inside of here, where you can check it out and download it at any time. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how to license your extension, whether it be a self-signed, created, free license, or a paid one for Mac or Windows that provides a bit more trust and security for your uh, end user. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe down below and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly. You can check out the links to all of the websites and information down below in the description. And down there, you can also follow us on Instagram to be notified of when the new videos are coming out immediately and the other behind the scenes things. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section down below. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.